in the name of my ancestors. Peace, five and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host of this particular program, known here on YouTube and many other places on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm. and your snub snub seven. I am your brother. <laughs> I am, and hopefully your friend. I'd rather us be uh, friends rather than enemies. I'm known as Talik Ibn Ra. I want to talk about Abraham Lincoln and we are taught that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. Now in modern times, we have become more educated and we are beyond the fairy tales that we were taught in grade school. So many of us who have been, who have gone beyond high school and grade school education, we know that Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States, did not care anything and could care less about the life, the hurt, and the pain of those called slaves. The Civil War came about only because Abraham Lincoln, the union must be kept together. That was the primary reason of why you had a civil war. The details, you do your own research and you will find yourself, you find for yourself that slavery had very little to do with the civil war. However, it seems as though becoming physically free was a was something positive that came up out of this incredible carnage that killed millions and millions of soldiers and caused this nation great damage. Now, let us let us just say for the sake of argument that Abraham Lincoln freed the slave just for the sake of argument and let us we know what the reality of the situation was but we're going to continue our next few minutes based simply on Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves was that bad or good people would say that is a good thing and for you to free a person that is called uh, a slave, a person that has been oppressed, a person who has been under extreme subjugation, then yes, we should find, or maybe, or we would find that to free them or relinquish them from this type of servitude is a good thing. Unless we are very, very cold hearted, and there are many of people out here who are cold-hearted there are many persons who wish that black people right now could be their slave let's go back to the good old days i sure would like that talik to be my slave well personally you would enjoy me being a slave because i would rather die than be your slave i'm not gonna go through that so you free a slave and on the surface that looks good and that seems to be a good thing so all over this country we have black folks and even the president of the United States they praise Abraham Lincoln but what is the sense what is the sense of freeing somebody but you do not rehab them from the damage that you put on them. 
when you find a hurt eagle and see you this the people of this nation you made it legal to cause harm to black folks for over 300 years you caused this nation caused this this harm not you as an individual but this nation made it legal and many of your ancestors participated and even to this day many Caucasian people or pink people you benefit from the riches that was gained from that day so that's why that you must accept responsibility because you continue to benefit from the wealth that was gained from this criminal activity but if you find a hurt eagle you do not try to make a pet out of that eagle you don't get attached to that eagle you help that eagle rehabilitate not try to be your pet not try to teach that eagle to be a chicken or a pigeon you keep the eagle as an eagle you help the eagle learn how to fly and you return that eagle back to the wild that is what good people do for eagles but the black man and woman in America what has happened is that the so-called Negro in America they were made deaf dumb and blind having no idea of whom they come from right here on YouTube you got black folks saying we Africans you got black folks saying that we from New Guinea you got black folks saying that we from some island somewhere we are deaf dumb and blind and we are confused because we have not we have been freed physically there are no physical chains on us but mentally we are dead people we have not been rehab so Abraham Lincoln instead of doing black folks a favor to free the black man without putting them in rehab first was a very cruel thing in order for us to be rehab or in order to rehab the descendants of slaves born in America those who caused this damage you should have tried to give us the knowledge of self so that we can return back to what you stole us from and I'm just going to use Africa as an example because there are so many folks who shame of Africa they want to live on islands they want to live in China they want to live everywhere except Africa but we're going to I'm just going to use Africa for an example if the people of America in power and the people back their leaders then they should have called proper rehabilitation for the slave and the first thing that you must do for the slave is give them a knowledge of self tell them and teach them any information that you can get so they can learn how to be an African again black again because you made us into animals domesticated animals you gave us your religion you gave us our your way of life how you do things your language your God and then you freed these people these thousands and millions of people in America that was one slave and after Abraham Lincoln's death Abraham Lincoln wanted the free slaves to be given 40 acres and a mule because even the slave understood that we must have land if we're going to be free so that we can take care of ourselves but once Abraham Lincoln was assassinated those who took over the White House decided because even with even even without 40 acres and a mule these blacks was coming out of slavery and they was progressing they was going they was uh, elevating in society they said we must do whatever we can to stop these blacks from progressing so they denied the slaves 40 acres and a mule 
So many black people return back to the plantations there where they was once slaves and had to make deals with these ex-slave owners. Some of them were given land by some of these slave owners and other wicked people and, and created what we call sharecropping and they were cheated out of their uh, out of their finances through making deals with some of these uh, wicked landowners. Anything to hold the black people down and it continued on for generations and generations. Then, of course, you know you had segregation and Jim Crow. Then you also had these laws that caused black folks to end up in these jails and prisons, free labor, back into another type of slavery. You were denied the right to vote, the, the, the right to own a gun to, to protect yourself. All kinds of madness. And you want us to forget the hurt and the pain of our struggle and we're not teaching our babies these things. So they don't feel no pain for their ancestors. They feel no pain for themselves. And as a slave, a slave don't feel no pain for their misery. They only feel pain for their massa. So in 2012, you don't hear too many black folks speaking out about our hurt and our pain. But as soon as somebody else is hurting, as soon as somebody else is, oh, there we go. Oh, that's so bad. And we just bawling and crying and whoo. But we don't shed no tears for ourselves. But we don't mind taking our foot and kicking another black man or woman in the backside. So all over YouTube, you have black men bashing black women and black women bashing black men. The madness never stops because these have never been re rehabilitated. They still slaves. And they are programmed just like the way they were programmed way back when they were physical slaves when the Caucasian racist pink people taught the black woman against the black man and the black man against the black woman and their children against their elders. It's the same thing. So until these descendants of slaves become properly rehabbed, they're going to always have a problem to themselves and in the society because when you are rehab, when you are in need of rehab, that means something is wrong with you. You are sick. And my time is out. Jot down your comments, y'all. Let's talk about it. This was and is the Rally's Temple on Earth. Are you ready? Guess who I am? I'm the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Coming right back at you. Angel Snuffin' Up 7. I'm your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik. Even raw, and of course, this is the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I only have about 10 minutes. I wanted to bring this to discussion, just something for us to talk about. And we're going to talk about this particular topic, and you make up your mind. I mean, you're going to make up your mind regardless to what anybody says anyway. Excuse me, my throat is a little dry. But uh, let us let us converse on this particular uh, subject. I was watching a uh, a excerpt, or was it? It was sixty minutes. I was watching sixty minutes, and on sixty minutes, they were um, they had a story about genetically modified salmon and right now this salmon is going through the process to be approved by the Federal Drug Administration Food and Drug Administration also this particular salmon this particular fish does not come from any ocean it is genetically modified it is specially bred by a company 
In fact, it could be the first life form. Listen, y'all. This could be the first life form to get a patent. Just like if you invent something, you go to the government and ask for a patent. So the only one who will have a right to produce this fish for at least the next seven years that will have a monopoly on this particular life form will be the company that genetically modified or created this fish. Those who oppose this fish being approved by the FDA for human consumption, they call this genetically modified salmon as Frankenfish based on the character Frankenstein where this doctor took all these various uh, body parts from deceased people, bonded them together and tried to use lightning to make this human being come to life. They call this Simon Frankenfish. What is Frankenfish? Frankenfish is a combination it, its DNA structure is that of an eel and two kinds of salmon. And what is special about frankenfish is that frankenfish grows two times as fast as what we know of as the normal Chinook or Atlantic salmon. And people fear Frankenfish. Now, at the same time, I want us to think about this. Also, at the same time, I want you to know that in our society, we eat different kinds of chemicals every day. We drink different kinds of harsh chemicals every day. So, to add a frankenfish to our diet really wouldn't even mean nothing. But let us try to understand exactly what frankenfish is. Because if you're going to deny, and I'm not advocating for, for frankenfish, I'm trying to give us an idea of what frankenfish is. Frankenfish is genetically modified. And when we think of Frankenfish, we think about this lab and these mad scientists and all like this. But genetically modified food and people have been going on for a long time. Did you know some of y'all love corn? Corn at one time was just a weed. It was just a little grain. It was cultivated. It was genetically modified by mixing certain grasses together by the ancient Aztecs. They created what we call in modern day corn. And based on this genetically modified food, this genetically modified plant, if, if the Aztecs was in 2012, you would call them mad scientists because that's what they were doing. They were taking DNA from one species of grass, mixing in it, mixing it with other grasses and created corn. And based on corn, corn caused great empires to rise. In fact, corn is very important to the world Right now, as we speak, there's not too many products or foods that we eat that don't contain corn. And corn is genetically modified. And there are all kinds of varieties of corn. And those varieties of corn come from genetic modification. When you eat certain grapes, and I'm going to use this as an example, a nectarine is genetically modified. It is a combination. Somebody caused a peach and a plum to come together and it produced a nectarine. A nectarine is a hybrid. 
It is not a part of the natural world. It is something that is man-made. When you see seedless fruit, when you eat, eat a seedless watermelon or a seedless grape, that is genetically modified because how is that plant going to reproduce without seeds? Everything that we know or see in nature in the plant world is caused, most plants reproduce by seeds. There are plants that don't reproduce by seeds, but these particular plants, we know that they reproduce by seeds. But during genetic modification, those seeds was made not to, to uh, process within the fruit. This is gen genetic modification. In nature, there is natural genetic modification due to, it's a very slow process, due to environmental factors. So as a black man coming out of Africa, once I leave that particular climate, I move from that climate, and as I move from that climate, and I stay in certain places, leaving that environment, moving towards new environment, that causes a reaction in the DNA where it will begin to adopt to the new climate wherever these people settle. Not only with people, but it does the same thing with animals and insects and all life forms. That is natural genetic modification. So there is natural genetic modification and there is unnatural genetic modification, but yet and still we've been living with this for thousands and thousands of years. We've been eating genetically modified uh, food for thousands of years. Tomatoes and peas and beans and all these domesticated plants all the varieties that you see the different kinds of apples and peaches all that's genetically modified not in a laboratory like we have today because they did not have that type of technology but now they do am i advocating for this i'm just letting you know you've been doing it and eating modified modified plants and animals all the different kinds of dogs that you have all the different kinds of cats and and pigs and all these all this is genetically modified by people not in a lab like we do today but genetic modification when it's all said and done by the hands of men it was not done due to environmental factors it is not done due to natural selection as charles darwin would say so not only have plants and animals been genetically modified, but you also have people, like I said uh, just a few seconds ago. The reason why you have people all over this planet that look different and act different is because of genetic modification. And if you take those of whom we call mulattoes, we're just going to use black people and pink people for an example. If you took the offspring of pink people and black folks put them on an island take them somewhere where they can just breed among themselves this genetically modified people will will bring into being a brand new different type of person on the planet genetic modification that's what occurs all the time now with everything there's always a positive and a negative. With corn, it, seem, it seems, from the outside looking in, it seems as though corn caused great positivity, positivity among the human family and brought into existence great civilizations and caused the human being to advance to a, a high level. But when you do the, the when you do something too much and when you really don't understand what you're doing there's a there's a alternate consequence so now you messing with something now you messing with DNA and the genes of, of different creatures that's more complicated than taking two plants split them together and cause them to grow genetic modification when you actually begin to go into a being that is composed of billions of cells and all kinds of DNA and you start messing around with that 
then we really don't know what the outcome could be. But here we are. We do know what happens with genetically modified people. The black man and woman in America, we are genetically modified. Not only are we physically genetically modified, but we have the mindset of the Europeans that, that mess with our mindset. Our minds have been genetically modified. We think like the oppressor. We, we act like the oppressor. We are no longer of, of Africa. We're no longer of those of whom that we come from, whether they live on an island or whether they live actually on the on the African continent. So there so in our situation it's a negative because now it's hard to return or try to find ourselves who and what we truly are because we know that we're not European. So there's a positive and negative in all things. Let us talk about it. Jot down your comments. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. I am the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. And you're snubbing up seven right back at you. And welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. On this particular uh, occasion, I would like to discuss something very serious for some of us it is talk we run our mouth but there is no activity there is no real action in order to accomplish the goal but for many of us who are sincere in the heart and that are real and we know this is the only solution, then I want you, those who make such an opinion that I'm about to bring forth to you, I want to call you on yours. Brother, what do you mean by calling me on mine? What you, what you mean by that? In the game called poker, there's a term persons use when they are faking a hand they really don't have. I'm calling your bluff. In the hood, when somebody is making a claim, but they cannot back up that claim due to fear and somebody makes you step up to the plate then there's a term called I'm gonna pull your whole card so this particular video will express both sides of the equation because I am going to on this video call your bluff and in turn I want you to pull my whole card and brother, this is in reference to what? What are you talking about? Just be patient just for one second because I'm going to explain to you very clearly what I'm talking about. I want to address and talk to all those regardless to your so-called race. Because not only do racist pink people or Caucasian people make this statement but I have been told by those who are the descendants of slaves born in America I've been told by many other so-called races to do the same thing so I'm gonna call your bluff you say that persons like myself or any black man or woman born in America anybody that is upset with America that are the descendants of slaves born here which we are citizens here we've never been to Africa to begin with so how can we go back to Africa when we never been there to begin with 
we may be related to people from Africa. We may be related to people with dark skin from some island from New Guinea or from Haiti or Jamaica or wherever you find dark people and they brought us here and made slaves out of our people. But we are American citizens. We were born and we were bred here. And that is a correct, and I'm going to make a video later, but that is a correct description of us. We are American citizens, but at the same time, it is a silly and dumb statement to tell us to go back where we never came from. We are just as an American citizen, according to your law, as you are. But at the same time, I will take you up on your offer to go back to Africa. In fact, I hope that Africa is not just the place that just as long as we leave. So with this video, I want to take you up on your offer. I want to call your bluff. All of you suckers out here that tell black folks, oh, go back to Africa. You don't like it here. You complain about living in America. Go back to Africa. Go back to squalor. Go back to hard times. You're going to wish that you were still here in America. Well, I don't know about all that because Africa is a big continent. The earth is a big continent. It is not necessary for me. I don't know about others. It's not necessary for me to go back nowhere. But it is necessary that we separate from y'all who are wicked. You who suffer immoral behaviors. You who are nothing but a nation of drunks and pedophiles. You gender confused. Dope addicts. Criminals. Thieves, liars, rapists, and murderers. Full of every kind of disease known and unknown to men. There's nothing special about your greedy, materialistic, wicked ways. Your violent movies. Your false religion. Your hypocrisy. So ain't nobody going to be missing nothing from living in this toilet stool. So I'm going to call your bluff. You want me to go back to Africa. Well, I, again, I can't go back to where I've never been. But you can help us in the effort to find another home. You can help us in the effort to separate from your nasty, filthy, vile, profane self. And fake. Because if you wouldn't fake, if you wouldn't greedy, if you wouldn't selfish, if you weren't immoral and nasty, I would not have to, and I would not feel this way. So you doing me a favor by telling me to go back to Africa or any other place on this planet. And I'm going to call your bluff and take you up on your offer regardless to your so-called race, Negroes included. So on all my videos that you ever see, you will see my email address and you will see my telephone number and you leave me a message telling me what you want to do. You want to donate tickets? You want to donate some type of title? Whatever you want to offer to this effort. And you be serious about it. Otherwise, don't call my phone. Don't send me no email. I'm calling you on your bluff. And I know you can do it. I know you can send black folks back to Africa or wherever we want or wherever we choose to go because you can send thousands of dollars to George Zimmerman and help pay a murderer, a killer of unarmed young man. You can help a murderer defend himself. You can make a school bus monitor that was bullied by children. You can make a school bus monitor, a millionaire. So I know that you can help us in this effort. I'm calling you your bluff. For those black people under the sound of my voice, it is unnecessary. It is necessary as an, a true adult that separation must be an option. The early pilgrims from 16, 
hundreds. They left England and they left Holland because they felt they were under oppression, suffering religious persecution, and they felt as though living in English society or the society built by the Hollanders was immoral and decadent, and they did not want to live under that anymore. And above all, they felt a need for separation from England, a separation from Holland, because they did not want their children, listen to me, they did not want their children to be influenced by the wicked. Do you understand why the black community is going down, down, down? It's because our children were living in the filth. We're living in the toilet stew with those who caused us to be in this condition. And you can't get clean till you get out of the toilet. Or you flush the toilet. You got to clean it up. But these people don't want to be cleaned up. So like the pilgrims, you got to get on a boat and you got to get out of Dodge. Now, the pilgrims, once they landed upon the shores of America, there were only about 250 or less. When it was all said and done, due to starvation, due to disease, the colony, the first colony only ended up with 50 people who survived, but out of that 50 that survived, and they were befriended by the native people here. Now you live in the mightiest nation that has ever been uh, raised upon the upon this planet. What do you fear? Those were the forefathers. So I'm asking you to join me in this effort and be real. My brother J.T. Riley once says there's only two people in this world fake and real. The pilgrims were real in what they wanted to accomplish. And look what their sacrifice, their death, Look what it caused to come into being. You should start wanting to be a forefather instead of being somebody's servant, somebody's secondhand man, a citizen when you can create a government. You can create your own laws. They are doing you a favor when they tell us to go back to Africa, when they tell us to separate. They're doing you a favor. You should not be afraid. You should be just like the pilgrims of old and separate so your children don't end up like Nicki Minaj and Rihanna and Beyonce and Jay-Z, Oprah, all these high-class slaves because they are influenced by this materialistic, greedy nation. Your success is, is based on your accumulation of material things but you are a liar. You're greedy and you're selfish and you're arrogant. You suffer from poor character. So you can be wicked and evil as long as you have money, you are successful. And criminals are supported, give them a bailout due to their criminal activity. What kind of nonsense? So bring, so I'm calling you on your bluff. And you call me or you pull my whole card and show that I'm a fake. Because I guarantee you, you support this effort, it's going to be real. And we'll be just as successful as the pilgrims of old. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. All right. I am. The mighty, mighty, mighty mm. Angel Snow Number Seven coming right back at you. This is the Reality Step on Earth, and I am the host known here as Talik Even Ra. I only have a few minutes, so I have a lot of ground to cover. So on this busy, let ye get busy. Okay, here we go. If we do not blame the racist pink 
or Caucasian people, then who do we blame? There are many out here who says, stop blaming pink people for this. Stop blaming pink people for that. Stop blaming. Stop it, please. <laughs> now, these same pink or Caucasian people will tell us accept responsibility and make proper choices at the same time they don't target themselves for this. Only black folks in America. We are the only ones who need to accept responsibility for our life and make proper choices. Never them. Let me give us a quick example. Again, while I am speaking, I want you to tell me if we are not going to blame Caucasian or pink people then who we are to blame. Using this as a quick, simple example. You go out into the woods and you catch a rabbit. When you catch the rabbit, the rabbit is wild. So you take the rabbit and you take it back to your home where you have other rabbits that you have captured. And while under your grip, under your control, you teach these rabbits and you keep these rabbits around dogs. Now, in the beginning, the wild rabbit still is a wild rabbit. But the wild rabbit begins to mate with rabbits that you have broken. And they, these rabbits have been around dogs. And these rabbits are rabbits, but they think they are dogs because they've been raised around dogs and you're teaching these rabbits how to be dogs. So even though you have a wild rabbit, the wild rabbit, you keep the wild rabbit from passing down what it is to be a wild rabbit to these rabbits that you have turned, made them think they are dogs. This goes on for generation and generation. So now you have rabbit dogs. They look like rabbits. And on the outside, they look like rabbits. But in their mentality, you taking away what a rabbit is. The rabbit is now a dog. So the rabbit loses its natural instinct. The rabbit loses who they are. So if you see a rabbit and the rabbit is trying to bark, and the rabbit is doing unnatural things that you know rabbits shouldn't do, whose fault is it? Is it the fault of the rabbit, or is it the fault of those who took the rabbit out of the wild and tried to make a dog out of the rabbit? That's what has happened to the black man or woman in America, and that's why you are living with black folks that love you because they don't know any better. They don't have no idea of who they are. They have dark skin and they look like Africans or they look like people, other dark people from around the earth, but they act and they behave just like a European. And since we act like Europeans, and that's why I call us dark Europeans, because we have dark skin, but we have the minds of our oppresses our slave masters and their children. We are no longer, that's why many of us, we defend Caucasian people so quick. We find, we make, we make excuses for Caucasian people. We try to do everything in order to involve you in our life because now you have become part of us when at one time you was not. Just like the rabbit who is now a dog. And who is to benefit from this new mentality? We don't benefit. If you look at the black community, it's in shambles because, because we don't have the correct mentality. Our mentality is targeted and, is, and it is now European. So now we live to benefit Europeans. And that's what you see in the black community. Whose fault is that? The fault 
is not of the the of the rabbit. The fault is the one who controlled the rabbit. And you done this to us. This government done this to us. You as an individual, you benefit from this situation because we are not a full functioning human being we are not of ourselves so we don't fight for ourselves we don't love ourselves then those of us who have learned a little bit about who we are we go to the government the government does not allow us to sue for damages Oh, that was a long time ago. We can't sue. We cannot find we cannot find resolution in the court system. So who is to blame for all this? Who do we blame for this people that live in America that's destroyed? Well, you need to accept responsibility and make proper choices, and you are absolutely right. So since we're dealing with an evil and wicked people, a wicked nation, then we have to take, accept responsibility for ourselves and make proper choices for the benefit of us, not you. But you want our success, whatever we are, you want some of that too. And that's not going to happen. Not for, not for those whose mind has become awake and you don't know how to deal with with a rabbit that is now a rabbit instead of acting like a dog. And it does not make any difference whether I have one dollar or a million dollars or what I've done to rehabilitate myself. It does not negate what this nation done to myself and our people. It's just like getting hit by a car. If you get hit by a car, and the other person is negligent. So you go through rehab. And you learn how to walk again. You learn how to talk again. You get over your injury. That does not negate what the person done to you by hitting you with that car in the first place. That's negligence. So I charge the United States of America and its people that benefit from slavery. Because there are many of you Caucasian people you are either related or you somehow you benefit or you don't care nothing about justice. You don't want to see black folks get nothing from being hurt so we can get hit by a car. Oh, Negro, you can walk again. Oh, Negro, you can talk again. You don't need nothing from the driver that hit you with the car. That's what you telling me. But every day in court, if you get hit by a car, anybody that injures you, there you go. You'll file a case real quick for damages, negligence, some type of liability. But when it comes to black people, make proper choices and respond. That is a proper choice. That is accepting responsibility. You hurt us as a people. So we have the right to speak out. We have a right to ask the court for and the government for reparations. But also at the same time, we know that we're dealing with a people that are not just. So if you don't have nothing to do with this, then, then direct us to the Caucasian or the racist people that, sh that we should blame. But you don't do that either. Don't blame the white folks. You have to blame the people that's in control. You have to blame the people that done it. Oh, they died a long time ago. They died a long time ago, but the wealth, the money that slavery created, that money, that wealth is still here. And only the children of the slave owners, the children of the people that made the slave boats and the insurance companies, they get to enjoy the benefits of slavery while the children of the slave don't get nothing and you it's all right with you except responsibility and make proper choices that's why you're in the situation that you're in because you refuse to accept responsibility and make proper choices and the reason why you don't accept responsibility for yourself and make proper choices is because you are an unjust 
people. It's not my fault. If my mother dies in a car accident and I am awarded a million dollars, that's not my fault. That's not my fault at all. I'm just I'm just the one who inherits her estate. So you have millions of black people that have died and suffered in this nation. Their families should be able to go to court and sue insurance companies and everybody that was involved in slavery and Jim Crow and all these other evil things that this nation and these people have done against us. These families should be able to go to court and sue, but you don't allow that. We should be able to sue the city of, of, of Montgomery, Alabama from what happened in the 60s. Those families, brothers and sisters that was bitten by dogs and sprayed with fire hoses, that wasn't a long time ago. But you don't want black folks to get no type of justice. So get out of my face with your fake self. Y'all fake. You can't be a human being thinking the way that you do. You don't care about nobody except yourself. If your family deserve the same thing, I wouldn't sit back in your way and try to stop you because all of a sudden you're going to get rich. That's the, that's the law. That's how it is. But you don't want black. You don't want to see black folks with nothing. Because then it makes us with money. Then we have money. Money is power. You don't want us to have nothing because you made mockery of the, these rabbits that you turn into dogs for 400 years. And now the rabbit is coming back into their right, correct state of mind and you don't like it. Well, keep getting angry. Keep getting upset because justice has arrived. Rise, mighty nation. You can accomplish what you will. This is your brother Taliki Miran. Those who want to hate on us, keep hating because we have made the proper choices and we are accepting responsibility. Thank you for listening. Peace.